hope everybody's uh, good and well and uh, sitting comfortably. Um, so yeah, if you don't know what I do, go and look on Discogs. I've been making music about 20 plus years under various aliases. Um, so yeah, we'll get that out of the way. And uh, yeah, basically I just wanted to talk about my journey into dabbling into the world of Eurorack modular uh, equipment. Um, for the past couple of years, I've uh, been building this building this setup up. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to kind of focus on uh, the thought of, because when I first started getting this together, uh, I wanted to just buy a few things that I could do something with. I didn't have the money to go out and buy some big system uh, with loads of modules. Um, and I was just looking around for what's the biggest bang for my buck I could get from the, from the outset. Um, and um, yeah, I, I started to build this setup. Now the the most expensive part of building a modular setup is often the, is often the case uh, which you need to mount the uh, modules in. Um, and I found these tip top audio uh, rack cases um, that were basically the cheapest option uh, for about, let me just check how much they are, they are because they're pretty cheap. Yeah, they're 129 euros for each uh, for each rack case, and you get the power supply with it. And this I found was the it was the cheapest way to uh, get into Euro rack. Um, then I decided, you know, you're gonna need a, a MIDI interface uh, is the first thing you're gonna need, um, and then I found uh, the mutable in mutable instruments Platts module. Um, out of everything I saw, that was the thing that gave me the biggest bang bang for my buck, so to speak. Um, it has 16 different uh, oscillator models, uh, basically meaning it's 16 different oscillators in one. Um, it has a built-in low-pass gate, uh, which is similar to a low-pass filter. It has a built-in envelope generator of its own. Um, so yeah, I figured this was kind of like the best way to start, to not pay out so much money at the beginning um, and to have some have something that uh, was usable that I could pair up with Ableton um, I could run some effects inside Ableton um, and uh, yeah basically have something that uh, I could start off with and build on um, I see a lot of uh, you know a lot of tutorials or a lot of uh, show people showing their modular or whatever there's a lot of big set big systems that people have and i just kind of wanted to show people that it can be a lot more accessible than you think um and you can make a whole track off of a module out of a, uh, from using only the sounds from a module such as this one so uh yeah without further ado i'm going to uh start patching away and uh building something up just to demonstrate uh what's what's possible um, if you want to find out more about this module, there's uh, plenty of videos on on YouTube. Uh, I find the DivKid uh, videos are, are pretty good, actually, uh, for this type of thing. Uh, he goes quite in depth. I want you to imagine that this herb verb isn't here. I'm just purely using it. I'm not going to use the effect of it. I'm just going to use uh, use it to basically turn my mono signal into a stereo signal. And I'm gonna just quickly oh, lay down a, ba a bass drum here, and uh, we'll get that in audio, and then we can take it from there. So let's see. Oh, that's a bit too high pitched. Let's uh, get this a bit down in the bass drum kind of area. Uh, okay. Get down there, there you go. Just turn up my monitor a little bit. So I'm just going to start bouncing these parts to audio and uh, layering some things up so that. Uh, we can get um, more than one thing going on at once. 
So that's that. We now have our bass drum. And let's get rid of. So yeah, it has a specific bass drum mode, which uh, and that was me just flicking through the different oscillator models. So this first model is uh, two 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 different oscillators in in one, so to speak. going on on this uh, I'm totally flying blind here by the way I'm just whatever comes comes I'm uh, none of this was really I mean apart from the basic idea none of it was really planned some of you who've seen some of my tech talks before might know that uh, my love of the Ableton saturator just for gritting things up a bit What I might well do, because I'm not satisfied with this, I'm going to use a little, another little uh, thing that I do. I have these uh, Unison MIDI chord packs, and they're they're chords, uh, loads and loads of different chords. I'm just going to see what we got here. You got a nice chord like that. I just previewed that. Now, naturally, the modular can't play more than one note at a time. But what we can do is, as you can hear there, what we can do is we can take the arpeggiator to split those notes up. These are the controls for the built-in envelope, so you can make the notes longer. And yeah, as I said, this is all just coming from here. There's nothing else at play here. So yeah, it's opening up the low pass gate. quite an obsession with a lot of people that uh, everything has to be done inside the modular, everything, your effects, everything. And I don't buy that. I'm, I'm more than happy just to uh, use my reverb, my built-in Ableton reverb. I've got a reverb here, but um, yeah, that was quite an expensive piece and uh, I'm focusing on this uh, little budget setup here. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna record this and uh, actually before I do that I just wanna see what our tweaking possibilities are. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Because yeah, once you tweak and record, it's not like you can go back and edit it. bit of a shame that these controls are almost a bit hidden behind a, a menu. I have to hold this button down while I'm, I'm tweaking to 
get access to the low pass gate. There's also um, pitch modulation here. Which I believe is the envelope inside triggers. Yeah. There we go, we've now got, and that's everything has been made just with this little module here. So I'm gonna go back in here and uh, so I've got some hi-hat sounds, which I believe are there. So we can just get a bit of that going on. Funny, this is almost like writing a live set on the fly, which is kind of kind of interesting. This is naturally not going to be the best mixed at the moment because it's all pretty on the fly so apologies for that. Just lay down some hi-hats there. Yeah, as you can see, just out of one little module there, you can get uh, quite a lot going on. Just add one more thing to it, actually. One more sound, and then we'll and then we'll move on. want to have a play with this cloud thing. There's this, uh, how is it called? I'm going to have to look in the manual now and see how it's called. The uh, granular cloud. Let's see what goes on with the granular cloud. See what we can get out of that. That's pretty amazing actually, I managed to lay down the hi-hat with the arpeggiator on, which is, uh, when I'm using the arpeggio because that's firing really low notes in. I think we need to bring the pitch of the notes right up so 
transpose those. There's a lot more of a texture really than a, a usable melodic element. But yeah, there's a demonstration for you of, uh, you can get quite a lot out of one module. And so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of point out to anybody who was uh, thinking about getting into module, into Eurorack stuff, but was put off by the price, or just thought, oh, I need loads of stuff to, you know, to do anything good. You can have just a MIDI interface, one module, and you can build a whole track. Um, I'm going to go through some of these, uh, let's get rid of the, so I'm going to go through some of these. Just to give you a bit of a, a bit of a demonstration of, uh, the different kind of sounds it's uh, it's capable of. As I say, there's there's other more in-depth videos online. Oh, that's nice. You can lose hours just flicking through like that. And go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's the whole essence of it it's about playing you know uh, it's about playing around getting inspired laying something down that you can turn into a cool track Whoa. pretty amazing how much uh, modulation uh, in the sense of modulation sources internally this thing has it was definitely a good a good first purchase that's for sure Now this is a very interesting one because this actually has voices inside it, literally like uh, speech synthesis. trying to find something in there. I'm sure there's something in there that's recognizable as a voice. Remember there was a load of words in there. Get back into something a little bit more musical there. Look in my. I need to double check on the manual. It's been a while since I actually had a big play with this thing. I have to remember whether. Okay, yeah, vowel and speech synthesis. It was that last one. If you play certain notes into it, it will come out with voices. Like, kind of like vocal samples. Be able to find them now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put that one down to experience. But yeah, that, that was a basic demonstration of uh, how you know you can you can get a lot out of uh, one box. Now, when I first bought uh, these two pieces in the case, I also bought the uh, the uh, Make Noise Maths, 
um, again, I wanted a module that uh, did a lot. Um, I get the feeling a lot of people buy this module and don't really understand what it does, but in essence, it's an LFO, uh, it's an envelope generator. Um, you can use it as a uh, to uh, uh, as a portamento device, as in you put your um, your note signal through your what would normally go in your voltage per octave here, your your pitch. You put that in here, uh, and this gliding between two different notes. If you know if you know what portamento is, you you know what I'm talking about. For those that don't, it's it makes a slide between. Uh, different notes, much like if someone's playing a bass guitar and they slide their finger on the strings uh, between notes. But the really interesting thing I find with this is you can vary the slide uh, on uh, the beginning or the end of the note, which uh, I find super interesting because I don't know, I've never found another synthesizer that, that does that. So let's see, this needs to go in here. And then we need. That's the other thing that you're going to have to buy is cables, because without cables, nothing works, and that can end up costing money. Um, okay, so let's now see how our little sequence here sounds. Let's get it on a more normal sounding oscillator model and see how this sounds. So yeah, then we get then we get the slide. That that slide is only at the beginning. Let's get this a little bit more. just on the end of the notes. Then you can get real crazy with it, because you can then... Because uh, this is basically, you've got two copies of the same thing here. You've got like the LFO envelope generator, portamento device, whatever, on this side and on this side. So what I can do is, I trigger that to cycle so it's uh, doing its LFO kind of business. Make it quite slow. Straight away you've got something a lot more a lot more random and interesting. Than you uh, than you would do without without having such a device. I mean that's that's the thing I find is key uh, in all of this kind of gear is uh, having modulation possibilities, having things that can basically be the same thing as you turning a knob, but it does it on its own. Um, which uh, leads me to a cautionary tale because after getting the maths, I also actually. Uh, I bought a multiple, which basically means you can split. You can put. I mean, I'll demonstrate with a multiple. I can put that signal into there, and that pitch information. But then, if I want to send it somewhere else, say I want to send it to this oscillator, I can send it out here also. And there's no degradation when you use a multiple. There's no degradation uh, that you could potentially get using stacked these uh, stacked cables here where you can stack one on another um, I like sending the same modulation source to a lot of places sometimes so uh, I thought it was quite a, an important thing to have but yeah so we've got this controlling back to my cautionary tale so I was thinking I would uh, let's just make this calm down, calm this down a bit. Make that 
a little bit calmer. Yeah, so I wanted more modulation sources, uh, much like the mats. I wanted something else, but I wanted something clocked. So I saw this 4MS uh, pingable envelope generator in uh, Kleinanziger, the uh, local Berlin equivalent to the local paper where you find your second-hand Yamaha keyboard, second-hand bicycles, whatever. Uh, and I saw this going at quite a reasonable price. So I thought about th two thirds of the price of what one new would cost me. So I took the plunge. Um, it was demonstrated to me and uh, looked like it was working fine. Um, but unfortunately, as time went by, I found that uh, the envelope side of it, the, being able to use it as just a single envelope generator wasn't working properly at all. I could use it as a clocked LFO. I've actually got this handy clock divider built in to my MIDI interface here, which is very handy. Um, so I can, I can get it to act like an, a, a clocked LFO. But for example, if, uh, if I take the cycle off, it's, yeah, it's not giving me what I need. So uh, the moral of my cautionary tale is, if you're gonna buy something second hand, make sure you know what all the functions, how it's, how it's supposed to function. Um, make sure you know those things and test those things if you have a chance. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people flying blind and uh, buying stuff totally on spec online. Uh, good luck to you, I won't do that. Um, yeah, I'd rather err on the side of caution in this day and age. Um, but yeah, that was my cautionary tale. However, it's still usable as, um, as a uh, clocked LFO. And um, just thinking, what can we modulate with this? So this, is the, this is the fun part, really. That's the, always the key, is like that's, that bit's good. I'm gonna record that. I like that. with the other piece now. Let's find out. Not bad, not bad. Now I'm getting the urge to slow everything right down because it's, you know, techno-y things is kind of like super easy to make, I, I find, and sometimes the, the challenge is just not there anymore. So what I can do is and actually in these uh, Unison chord pack I have, it actually has progressions built in, which for our purposes right now, uh, is if I want to do something very melodic, is uh, very useful.
<laughs> Although a bit high in pitch for my liking. That's what I was saying about uh, not being afraid to use built-in effects. I'm just going to dive into my dive into my effects here and. Uh, Um, so yeah, in addition to uh, these three pieces, as I developed uh, the setup that I had, I invested in uh, a cheaper envelope generator and uh, VCA, voltage control amplifier, um, just to have a few more, more basic uh, modulation possibilities. So I'm going to start throwing these in the mix a little bit here. And uh, just the way I use them. Let's, so we need to get that. Needs to go there. Around the same time I got these two modules, I invested in the uh, in the mixers. I actually had a, I had a different module before I got the uh, this Verbos uh, oscillate complex oscillator, which I love. We're going to get onto that in a bit. Um, I had um, an IntelliJ uh, Rainmaker delay unit, which actually ended up going poof on me and with smoke out the back and everything. Uh, after that, I decided no more IntelliJ. Yeah, I mean the, the new MIDI piece is pretty cool and I haven't had any problems with that but uh, and the other problem I had with the Rainmaker was it was just too digital sounding it was really very digital sounding and uh, I can do digital sounding inside the computer I don't really want the module to do that really and it just felt very very limited um, I could only modulate so many things there was a screen on it and uh, it was very fiddly kind of menu diving uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't really, wasn't really satisfied with that. Um, so yeah, I got rid of it and I got the, I got the verbos. Um, but yeah, what I'm gonna do, because one of the main things I do with, with this mixer, because there's two different outputs on the plats, um, which give two different variations on the, on the sound that's coming out of it. Um, so then we can mix them together. there and going into there so yeah that was the sound we had before oh, 
that was the sound we had before. And then that's the other variation. And what I was saying about you can't really do chords um, with a monophonic synthesizer. You can use a big reverb to get a more chord and run an arpeggiator very, very fast. Try that. We've got a uh, quite a nice reverb, a uh, flat foot reverb. Sometimes. There we go. I always really wanted a beautiful instrument to clouds for doing this, this kind of thing it does it really really well but they don't make them anymore yeah the cool thing with this reverb is you can you can apply some EQ to it Got all sci fi. <laughs> Calling Dr. Smith. Yeah, this is it. You just get lost for days in this kind of thing. But before we do that, I've got a few more modules I want to talk about. We can ignore the pan one. I actually bought that um, as something to uh, get to uh, get a stereo signal out of a mono signal to go into my um, into my uh, rainmaker when I had it. Um, now it's kind of sitting there a bit redundant without the rainmaker. I'm going to get into now uh, at the other end of the scale of oscillators. Um, which is this thing here, which is the uh, Verbos Electronics Complex Oscillator. Um, Mark Verbos, who developed this and all of his other gear, not too far, just down the street from here, actually, um, he gave me an, an introduction. I've known I've known him for a few years. He gave me an introduction to this and a few other bits of kit. Um, whilst this does a lot of things, uh, a lot of different things, um, and it's not too expensive, this does kind of one thing. And it does it very, very well. Uh, it sounds huge. I'm going to unpatch. I'll often do this, actually. When I've made a track with this setup, uh, and I want to kind of go back to the beginning again and just start again from scratch, I just pull all of the cables out. and just Because otherwise, you can kind of get really lost in uh, what's going on and uh, not know what's, what's triggering what and what's affecting something else. So... It's really good a lot of the time just to have a clean slate and yeah, get back to the beginning. 
Um, yeah, I really noticed the step up. That's not to say that uh, the Platts doesn't have its place, because it certainly does. There's a lot it can do. Um, and it's a very interesting oscillator. But um, if you want that real raw analog, that Buckler sound, like a, an old Buckler modular synthesizer, um, Mark Verbos, who developed this, he uh, for many years he was servicing uh, old Buckler modulars. Uh, which gave him the insight to be able to design his own pieces like this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to patch this. Oh, I'm going to need a stackable here because we need to give it the the note information twice, so to speak. So we're going to do this, and then this one doesn't have any envelope built in or anything like that. So you're going to have to use a, uh, a VCA and an envelope generator just to, because otherwise, I mean, I will demonstrate now. Um, you just get one tone non-stop. That's through my giant reverb as well. <laughs> With the, uh, without the reverb, it's just your buzz there and you need it to start and stop. So you're going to have to put it through a VCA with a, with a, I've done this the wrong way around, that one. This is the other thing, you have to watch out for the length of your cables. I mean, naturally, you don't want to have loads of long cables all the time, but, okay, so that, that's without the, uh, without the envelope triggering it. Now it's got an input, so it's waiting for a signal from this envelope generator. So we go back to our little sequence that we had here. And I'm going to need to trigger that. That's in the wrong one. That needs to go there. There we go. got to hear it down low to really appreciate what this module is all about because it's about the bass. basically two oscillators in one box um, it's actually uh, I believe the uh, initial idea for this module was based on a Buckler design um, the, uh, where you have one one oscillator modulating the other it, which basically means one oscillator is controlling the the pitch the more you turn this knob the more this oscillator is basically, it's the same as it's turning this knob like this very quickly. But when you start getting up into audio rates, you can get some interesting textures. Let's throw a bit of, throw a bit of reverb on that. And, uh, It's actually a really good module if you want to just do really raw, banging techno. It'll, it'll just do that on request. Although I do find with a lot of these things, all of these modules, sometimes it can take a lot of wading through absolute nonsense to get what you to get what you're looking for. I mean, obviously, when you, the more time you have with devices, um, the more you're going to get to know them, the more you're going to know what you need to do to coax the sound out that you're looking for. Um, yeah, just throw a bit of uh, delay on. In 
fact, talking of talking of techno, this might be a good point just to just to show what you can do with this uh, on a kind of uh, raw techno kind of level because it is really great for that kind of thing. Let's get a load more bass drums going there. I might even delve into one of my other drum racks uh, just to. That's one thing also. If you're going to use uh, internal Ableton stuff, you've got to think about the latency because it's always. I mean, unless you've got, I think there's a pre a PreSonus sound card that uh, claims to have zero latency. Um, all sound generally, most sound cards are all going to have. Uh, they're all going to have a bit of uh, a bit of latency, and you have to take that into consideration. Uh, generally, once this comes up, then I'm going to then I'm going to dive into the latency and uh, adjust it so it's going to come in out. Of t it's not going to be out of time. You press the you press the delay button there. It's a delay button on Ableton. They're getting this on the screen, right? Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, and I tend to find it's 27 milliseconds. Let's see if that matches up. There's my, my punch box. There we go. Just to demonstrate the issue with the latency, I'm going to take the latency off there. There, you can hear the. So yeah, it needs to be about 27 milliseconds. It will be different depending on what the latency of your sound of your sound card is. But yeah, well now we're banging our techno drum now. <laughs> I just want to, in fact, if you've got Max for Live, there's some really great little uh, sequencer to it. I believe it's the mono sequencer. This is a really great tool if you just, if you want to get an instant result. Come on, Beach Ball. Don't Beach Ball me. You can just trick here. Let's take the cycle off and we need another cable. As I always like a bit of portamento on my
So yeah, straight away, you can, if you want to do that banging techno thing, you can... Final piece, um, the final addition to my to my setup here, which is the uh, Earthverb. Now, when I was first when I was first getting into uh, building the system, I, I was very mindful that uh, I didn't want an oscillator, filter, envelope, yada yada yada. What you get on every analog synth, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to replicate an analog synth. Um, just in a rack form. Like you can get a lot of good modulation possibilities and that kind of thing with that. I wanted, I was looking for sounds that were out there. I mean, I, I really was uh, getting this together for my juxtaposition project, which was more of a, an industrial techno kind of project. So I was looking, I was really looking for sounds um, that, you know, nobody's heard before. Uh, and that leads me to the, uh, to the herb verb, which is basically a reverb unit but you can uh, modulate every parameter pretty much, uh, which can lead to some pretty uh, out there effects. So let's... So we've got this high pitch sound here. Obviously the other sound's recorded in, so we can't do anything further with that. Um, going to do is I'm going to clock this pingable envelope generator so we've got something that's quite kind of rigid in the time perspective and uh, obviously when the light's flashing it's putting out a signal so Just it uh, modulating the mix on the reverb. I think we can get something similar. I 
was hoping to get something similar out of the out of the decay, but um, I think that's something that's more effective over a long long period of time. It's also a reverse reverb, which can make things quite interesting. So yeah, modu modulate it over a longer period of time, and that can bring out something quite interesting also. But yeah, I really wanted to get away from, in fact, Mark Bybos was always telling me, don't get a filter. I was really interested in one of his filters. Um, but he was like, no, West Coast, as they say, the West Coast school of uh, synthesis, where it's not about filtering, it's about, uh, for example, with this setup here, the, the, the way that we change the timbre of the sound by modulating one oscillator with the other, We can also modulate the amplitude. I think we're going to slow everything down again just so that we can get into more what what this uh, what this this uh, reverb module is about. With such uh, with so much going on here, it's a bit hard to hear. So maybe we'll go over to something a bit more. But even yeah, even with no sound going in, it's still reacting. Especially if I turn the decay up, <laughs> could get out of control quite easily. Um, I'm going to throw another one of these chords in, and. Uh, I think just the chord, not a progression. Where are we? I'll throw this in here. And, and an arpeggiator. Where's my MIDI effects? And then it gets completely lost into the reverb. So that's now modulating the, the size of the reverb. Which also gives me quite an interesting idea of maybe we can tap that into the pitch. As I say, I just really wanted to get away from that basic, stereotypical analog, analog synth kind of sound. Obviously adds a lot of a lot of texture. But as I 
I say, yeah, the main aim was just to get away from that stereotypical kind of thing. And then we're going to have to plow through some nonsense here to... get what we're looking for a little bit more. <laughs> electro vibes off of that. <laughs> with arpeggiators of uh, I'll use the same chord progression uh, quite often rather than using these preset chord progressions I'll uh, make my own up from because these uh, this unison midi chord pack it's just a gold mine basically of uh, yeah loads of chords so if you're not the most musically minded person if, uh, if you, you know if you're not really that up on your music theory if you're not a keys person um, it's some great building blocks um, to put together really great melodies and especially used in this way with an arpeggiator that just gives it a whole uh, a whole other edge now the, the tricky bit here is going to be trying to keep this whole thing in tune although what I can do is effect
as I said, the challenge was going to be to keep it in tune. That's where you can get lost really easy. Oh, oh, I think I managed it. Yes. Wow, that was a win. <laughs> I thought I weren't going to save that one. I hope I haven't got too lost in the box here for everyone. I hope this is still interesting. Because, th th yeah, you can often lose days, weeks, months, years, um, forget to eat, that kind of thing with playing with. But I'm going to grab that. I'm just, I'm just having fun here. I'm just, and probably have written some new tracks in the process. Particularly as a musically, I'm going in a bit more of a, a, a IDM direction and more. As you know, the clubs are closed. You know, there's a few places open. There have been a few places open over the summer, but uh, you know, my heart hasn't really been on the dance floor so much as late uh, of late. So I've been uh, getting more into listening music and uh, writing that kind of stuff. So I think after I've got this part down, I'm going to challenge myself to write another part um, and get that in tune as well. Because that would be pretty amazing if I, if I manage that. Also, I want to get a little bit into the cross modulation on the uh, on the complex oscillator because it's got some interesting uh, features. So that's going round and round now.
almost there, but not quite. Okay, so let's get into some modulation. It might not be perfectly in tune, but I just want to show everybody what you can do with this thing. So I'm going to go for a, a slow LFO. Right, there are a few questions. One was um, when you're jamming, 
do you take mixing already into consideration or do you do all the mixing afterwards? The mixing really, I mean, there's always going to be a little bit of mixing uh, while while you're uh, jamming away because um, you got to catch the vibe of the track. It's got to sound good. It's got to sound right. But the final tweak, there's always going to be a lot more final tweaks. Um, so, I mean, basically, it's a case of just getting it sounding good so you feel the vibe. Well, that's how I do it personally, just so I feel the vibe and uh, then I can create the track and then, yeah, make the, all the final tweaks at the end. So you would, like, do another session afterwards where you do, uh, like, close the project, close the jam, a few days later go and do mixing? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, a const it's like a constant process. Uh, I mean, like, I, I might spend a day in the studio where I literally just one other like like how i've done here i'll just do one sketch after another just sketch 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 because not everything you're going to make is going to sound great not everything you're going to make is going to sound like something you're going to want to like even proceed to arranging uh, let alone release so i tend to find the most productive way is to for example have a day at the studio where you just work on ideas and just be sketch 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 outside of the modular just inside ableton i'll do the, exactly the same um, and just sketch uh, and then only bother to arrange the tracks I really feel are, are worth arranging. Do you have anything else for me there? Yeah, there's another question uh, asking how you go from like 16 or 32 bars that you recorded into like a full arrangement, if you have any tips for that. The best way to do it, and like this is my secret tip of, of arrangement. Like a lot of people have come to me and said, oh, I have problems arranging, how, how do I arrange? The best thing to do is make loops of everything and just drag everything out as long as you want the track. So say you want the track five minutes, you just make a five minute loop of everything basically and then go back and cut. Because that's like when we used to make music back in the day and uh, we'd literally record everything just stereo into the computer. Like the only role the computer was playing quite often would be a little bit of sequencing maybe and recording or if we had, like I used to use MPC 2000, MPC 1000. I used to use these boxes for sequencing and drum machines. And we would just jam it live and maybe do an edit in SoundForge. It wasn't even like multi-track because we couldn't afford the processing power for multi-tracking back in the day. Um, so, you know, we didn't have the issue with arranging, but it, doing it in this way where you drag out five minutes and then go back and cut, that's a lot more like how you would uh, play it live when you were jamming it in because you would be muting things in and out. Um, so I tend to find that's the best way. If you're ever having trouble with arrangement, just drag the whole thing out five minutes, eight minutes, three minutes, however long you want it, and then just cut what you don't want. Yeah, one, one question that I always ask is, um, if your studio was to burn down and you could only save one piece of equipment, what would it be and why? Well, I would say generally the laptop, but the la laptop generally stays with me, so that wouldn't be in the studio if it burnt down. I think if I could grab, and you mean I couldn't grab the whole rack, <laughs> I'd probably grab the complex oscillator, because that thing alone, you it just sounds so big, and it does it does things that I can't do with the computer. It, do, it has a uh, a special sound to it that I can't get with the computer. Do you have more there or? Well, if there are any more questions, like write them in the chat now. Um, I yeah, while we we've like still got 10 minutes or so to yeah, answer like 10, them. 15 minutes left. So think of your question, write it in the chat, and then I can ask Mark. And yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna dive in a little bit more here. But yeah, jump in. Jump in if anyone uh, asks. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I haven't. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Bring the bring the herb uh, back into the fold here and see if we get some craziness. That's quite often what it's all about is it's a trouble when I've got my portamento, then I've lost the Ah, uh, it's the microphone a bit. Yeah. Are we all good? Yeah. So I've lost one source of modulation. What I can do is See, I've got a stackable there. I need my other stackable cable. If I can find my other stackable cable, what did I do with it? Should I? Aha! Here we go. 
go. So then, I can send the clock that's pinging this defective thing. Matt Spandex, if you're out there, I know you might be listening. I was meaning to send this to you as a little project for you to see if you can fix it, and you can keep it if you can fix it. Um, and then I'll, I'll use the rack space for something else, because I know you like doing things like that. Yeah, big shout out to Matt Spandex. Cycle, that's why it's not working. I was like, why isn't it working? It's cycle, it's the thing that doesn't work if it's not cycling. So, plug things in and you go it's not working why isn't it working so we've got what we got here that's going into there okay that's working aha if you can answer this but um, someone was asking if you had the chance to try some of the 303 clones or remakes that came out recently and if they compare to the original the only one I use is Fosscyan that's the one I've used for years and I swear by it as being the most the the closest to a kind of real 303 sound um, out of all the soft all the software options um, I mean, I made a lot of acid tracks over the years. That's always served me good enough. Um, I don't really hear enough of a difference for me to warrant getting uh, getting a, a hardware uh, version of that. Um, and yeah, I think my time of doing that, I mean, I'll, I'll do the odd acid track for fun, but um, yeah, it's not something I want to get seriously invested in. Do you have some more for me? Um, no, I don't think there's any more questions right now. Let me have a quick look. Okay, well, if we've got five minutes left, then maybe we'll... Uh, we've got five minutes, right? Yeah, of course. Th then maybe we'll... Uh, we'll uh, end, on a, end on a track, end on a finished piece. Um, let me find uh, something I want to play. Where are we? Um, let's see. Ah, now here's a track. There's a track here that is a great example of uh, of the complex oscillator doing its doing its techno thing that I made with uh, Don Knox. 
when he was he was here visiting uh, a while back before before this craziness happened. I don't know where we're going to release it. I don't know what we're going to do with it. I might just sit on it until clubs are open again because it doesn't seem like much point at the moment. But yeah, we'll finish with that. Sounds so huge and juicy. It's huh? Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's good to play people something they might not have ever heard. Well, they won't have ever heard because nobody's. It's only me and Donna, Donnell who've got this track, so. Next got the shout out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Punchbox uh, by D16 is my biggest kind of bass drum machine. Um, as I've got more into the IDM stuff recently, I have been pulling more out of the plats, actually, because it's uh, just something a bit different. But uh, 
generally I've been using punch box. Like that to me, I mean, I don't like the presets. Presets I'm totally not into. Uh, I would love it if they would let me loose uh, to help them design version two of it because there's so many things I'd love to change about it. But the basic engine of it, the, especially the 909 emulation is awesome. Really, really great. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, thanks to Music Board for funding us. Uh, thanks to In Theory for, for doing the stream. Also thanks to her for, for doing the restream. And yeah, obviously, most importantly, thanks to you, Mark, for, for the talk. Thanks for having me, it's been a pleasure. Uh, everyone, make sure to sign up for the Tech Talk newsletter to keep in the loop. Have a good night. See ya.